start this off, place a small saucepan onto your stove top, pour in 1.5 cups or 375 milliliters of full fat milk, place onto a medium heat and heat the milk until just warm. Alternatively, you can use a microwave for about 30 to 40 seconds. And then if you want to be really specific, heat the milk to around 40 degrees Celsius or 104 degrees Fahrenheit. Once warm, remove from the heat. In a large mixing bowl, add in one tablespoon or nine grams of dry yeast, two teaspoons out of a half a cup or 110 gram measurement of caster sugar, and we will be adding the rest of the sugar in the recipe later, and pour in the warm milk. Whisk this together until just combined. Then leave this to sit for 10 minutes to allow the yeast to feed off the sugar. And during this process, the yeast will start to create a froth on top of the milk. And after 10 minutes, here's what it will look like. Add in four and one quarter cups or 640 grams of bread flour, the rest of the half cup or 110 grams of caster sugar, one and a half cups or 200 grams of sultanas, and you can swap these out for chocolate chips if you'd prefer, two teaspoons of ground cinnamon, two teaspoons of ground allspice, the zest of one large orange, which adds a delicious fruity background note, one whole beaten free range egg, 50 grams of melted and cooled unsalted butter, and three quarters of a teaspoon of sea salt flakes. Now we have two options. We can either use a stand mixer with a dough hook attachment and mix this on low for five minutes until smooth, or we can knead this by hand. And I'm going to knead this by hand as I understand not everyone owns a stand mixer. Using clean hands, mix all of this together until fully combined. Now that this is all together, dust your workbench with bread flour and pour out the dough. With any leftover bits stuck in the bowl, sprinkle a small amount of flour into the bowl and rub it in to remove the stuck dough. Sprinkle the top of the dough with a bit of flour, then using the palm of our hand, push down, fold back and push down, repeating this process for 8 to 10 minutes or until the dough has fully come together and is smooth and unfortunately doing it by hand is a bit of a workout. Make sure to mop up any flour if the dough becomes sticky and adding a small amount more if necessary. After 10 minutes and the dough is smooth and not overly sticky, shape it into a nice smooth ball, just like that. In a large mixing bowl, pour in one teaspoon of vegetable oil and wipe it around the bowl with some kitchen towel. And this will prevent the dough from sticking to the bowl during this next step. Add the dough into the bowl, place over a warm damp tea towel and allow this to proof for one hour until doubled in size. Proofing is the rest time in baking that activates the yeast in the dough. The yeast consumes carbohydrates and expels the carbon dioxide gas that causes the dough to expand and rise. After one hour, our dough has risen really nicely. Give it a couple of punches to knock the air out Dust the bench with a small amount of flour and tip out the dough. Knead the dough for a further 30 seconds just to make sure there is no air bubbles left in it. Shape it into a log and roll it 60 centimeters or 23 inches long. Slice it in half and then continue to roll each half into 40 centimeters or 15 inches long. Then slice each half into six even sized pieces and you should end up with 12. And you can also weigh them to make sure they're all the same size. Line a nine by 13 inch deep sided baking tray with parchment paper. Roll the dough into individual balls and to make it easier, fold the sides of the dough underneath the ball to make it nice and smooth. Place the dough into the prepared tray and line them three across and four down. Place over some cling wrap that's been lightly oiled. And the reason we're not using the tea towel again is because we don't want the dough sticking at this point and it will ruin their nice look. We're then going to allow these to proof for another 40 minutes or until risen by 75%, just a little bit less than double in size. 20 minutes into the second proofing, preheat your oven to 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. When the dough has risen by 75%, to make the crosses in a bowl, add half a cup or 70 grams of bread flour, 95 milliliters of cold water, and whisk that together until it forms a nice, smooth, pourable paste. Then either using a piping bag with a three millimeter nozzle or a Ziploc bag with the corner cut off, pour in the flour and water paste, remove the cling wrap, and gently pipe on the crosses, making sure to go from the very edge of each bun. And I have to apologize for being in the way right now.
Once the first lot of lines have been added, pipe across to create a cross, making sure to go from the very edge of each bun. And now finally, we're ready to bake. Place these into your preheated oven and bake for 20 to 22 minutes, rotating the tray halfway through. Five minutes before the buns come out the oven, in a bowl add in half a cup or 110 grams of caster sugar and 150 milliliters of boiling hot water. Using a pastry brush, mix it all together just until the sugar has dissolved. Remove the buns from the oven and glaze them with the sugar water. And you'll notice straight away that these will transform into something spectacular. And you won't need to use all of the sugar water, just enough to give it a nice glaze. And then when the sugar sets, it will create an amazing light crunch on the outside of the bun. Allow these to sit in the tray for five minutes just to soak up that sugar water. Gently remove them from the tray onto a wire rack And here you go. These look, feel and smell absolutely fantastic. Let's cut it in half. And whilst it's still warm, spread over some butter. And they are seriously amazing. They're soft, fluffy, fruity with a slight crunch on the shell and the small amount of spice just takes these to a whole next level. This recipe makes 12 hot cross buns but can easily be doubled or tripled depending on how much space you have in your kitchen. These are best kept in an airtight container in a cool dark space for up to four days and they can be frozen for up to three months. And to serve these I'd recommend toasting them and serve them up with your choice of filling. Happy Easter everyone, stay safe, thanks for watching and enjoy.